Arthur Graham Owens, also known as Arthur Graham White, was born in Pontadawi near Swansea on the 14th April 1899, and he was a Welsh double agent for the UK during the World War II. He was working for MI5, but fooled the German intelligence agency he was working for them. Owens was known to MI5 by the code name Snow, which was chosen as it is a partial anagram of his last name. He ran a company that made batteries for ships and was a civilian contractor for the Royal Navy. In 1936, he had been briefly employed by the Secret Intelligence Service to provide information on what he had seen in the German shipyards. In 1938, Nicholas Ritter, a German agent in Britain, operating under the name Dr. Ransor, made contact with Owens, who had little loyalty to the United Kingdom. His work also provided a cover for any foreign trips he might have to make. He visited Germany that year and was recruited by the German intelligence. While Owens was grateful for having payments for his espionage, his real interest was sexual, as German intelligence provided attractive women for him. His abware reference was A3504, and he was given the code name Johnny, later changed to Colonel Johnny. On returning to Britain, Owens had second thoughts about spying for Germany, and in September 1938, he told the British authorities of his contact and the fact that he was to receive a radio transceiver from the Germans. Although he went to Germany to collect the radio, two weeks later he pretended it had arrived at the left luggage office of Victoria Station in London early in 1939. Owens turned the radio over to MI5 and the experts discovered it was more advanced than the British equivalent. They gave the radio back to Owens. On the 11th of August 1939, Owens visited his abwehr controller in Hamburg with his girlfriend. During this visit, his wife, whom he was separated from, had written to his German contact, denouncing him as a British spy. She also went to the British police to tell them he was a German agent. Despite this information, no action was taken by either side. The British police failed to pick him up on his return on the 23rd August and he used his radio to send several messages from London to Germany over the next week. War between Britain and Germany broke out on the 4th of September. Owens made contact with the special branch to volunteer his services. However, he was instead interned in Wandsworth Prison as someone with hostile associations. MI5 decided that Owens could act as a double agent. On the 12th September, MI5 returned the radio to Owens in Wandsworth, where it was listened to by a warder as Owens tried to make contact with the Germans. MI5 agreed to his release on condition he sent agreed messages to his German contacts. He was released from prison, put in a new property with his radio and girlfriend. Owens was helped in mid-September to go to the Low Countries, where he met with German agents in Rotterdam and informed them of the chain home stations in England designed to detect incoming aircraft. He was asked by the Germans if he could poison water reservoirs in England. He returned to England and began transmitting misleading British messages. At the beginning of the war, the Germans asked for regular weather reports from him for the use of the Luftwaffe and also to test his credibility. These were sent by radio. At another meeting in Belgium with Abwehr in Brussels, Owens was given £470 in cash, the value of a house, for the chain home information and some detonators for use in sabotage. He had taken along another double agent, also a Welsh nationalist, who was instructed to start a postage stamp business so that the Germans could communicate through micro dots on stamps. A further meeting in December 1939 took place between Owens and Ritter of the Abwehr in Brussels, where he was given more money and promised a salary of £250 per month. He would be sent explosives and a better radio. Owens told MI5 that the Germans had told him that the phony war would end in mid-May, which proved accurate. The Germans believed Owens was their top agent in Britain. MI5 was suspicious of Owens when he hired a fishing trawler from Grimsby to meet with Ritter on the Dogger Bank in the North Sea. Owens took a second double agent, Sam McCarthy, codename Biscuit, who had been put in place by MI5 to test Owens, so that McCarthy could be trained in Germany. The meeting failed and Owens was found to be in possession of a list of all key MI5 personnel. 
a 1939 menu card for a formal dinner of intelligence personnel, arrested and threatened with the hangman as a traitor. The menu card was traced back to a disillusioned MI5 officer, who then committed suicide. A second attempt at the Dogger Bank meeting, this time controlled by MI5, also failed. Ritter in a Dornier flying boat failed to find the trawler. MI5 thought that Owens was only interested in making money from both sides, and that probably neither side trusted him entirely. Owens was permitted to continue radio transmissions to Germany, but MI5 tried to make sure that Owens only passed on to the Germans the information that they had given him. Transmissions were now being made by Morris Burton, an ex-prison warder who had been looking after Owens in Wandsworth and had adopted Owens' style of transmitting. Ritter still believed in Owens, but was feeding him with misinformation about the planned invasion of Britain, at the same time as Owens was sending misinformation to Germany about the bombing of Britain. In August 1940, McCarthy, who was working for MI5, went to Portugal and met Ritter, handing over certain modified documents, such as ration cards, and receiving in return a new radio at £950. The meeting set up by Owens boosted Owens' position in German eyes. One of the most important pieces of fake information sent by radio to Germany was the supplying of false names and ration book numbers. These were used on fake documents for Abwehr agents who were sent into Britain. Owens helped deliver German spies to MI5, who were then given the choice of becoming double agents or facing a hangman or the firing squad. Most chose to work for Britain, becoming double agents themselves and delivering vital information to the Allies, including details about troop movements and the keys to cracking German codes. The German agents were part of their Operation Lena, the infiltration of agents into Britain to discover British coastal defences prior to Operation Sea Lion, the invasion of Britain. One parachuted German agent, a Swedish national, Gusta Caroli, was captured, agreed to be a double agent, and sent a message saying he was hurt and landing. The Germans asked Owens to meet the agent and help him. As a result, Owens' status increased further in German eyes. During the bombing of London, Owens was moved by MI5 to Adelstone in Surrey, where he lived in style on his £250 per month German salary with his girlfriend, Lily Bade, and their newly born baby. In February 1941, Owens was permitted to fly to Portugal to meet Ritter, accompanied by Walter Dicketts, an ex-RNAS officer who had worked in air intelligence during the previous war and had since served several prison sentences for fraud. Unable to trust Owens, MI5 had instructed Dicketts to verify Owens and infiltrate into Owens' network, where he could be run as a separate and if necessary, alternate source of information. Dicketts was instructed by Tar Robertson, head of the double agent section in MI5, to take his World War I staff appointment with their air ministry to prove his value to the Germans and to try and get himself taken into Germany for training. Ritter invited Dicketts to come to Hamburg for interrogation by experts from the Abwehr, which Dicketts accepted and was escorted through Spain and France into Germany. Ritter refused to allow Owens to accompany Dicketts, and he was forced to remain behind in Lisbon. Using material provided to him by MI5, Dicketts managed to convince the Germans he was a traitor, willing to sell out his own country for cash and to help end the war and was accepted as a German agent. It blew him with Ritter, and both flew back to England in late March, when Owens was found to be carrying £10,000 and explosive pens. Ritter instructed Dicketts to purchase a boat when he returned to England so he could ferry German spies and sabotage equipment from the Nazi-occupied Channel Islands into England. Three weeks later, Dicketts met up with Owens in Lisbon. The mission was very dangerous as MI5 thought George Sessler, the Abwehr officer, was only pretending to defect in order to test Dicketts. MI6 got Dicketts out immediately after he made his offer to Sessler. Owens claimed to have informed Dicketts before he even went into Germany that Owens had told Ritter that both he and Dicketts were working for MI5, a fact which Dicketts strenuously denied. 
The collapse of the Snow Network ended the careers of double agents Snow, Charles, GW, Biscuit, Summer. Although GW was able to re-establish himself through another network. Owens viewed the fact that Tickets had nonetheless gone willingly into Germany as proof that he'd been turned by the Germans. MI5 spent countless hours interrogating each agent and in the end Dickett's account was believed by some in MI5 and not by others. The chairman of the Double Cross Committee, John Masterman, was one of those who believed Dickett's account. Owens was imprisoned until the end of the war for having endangered Dickett's life and for having revealed secret information that his pre-war German radio transmitter was being operated by MI5. Dickett's continued to work as an agent for both MI5 and MI6 until 1943, undertaking a further mission to Lisbon to help an Abwehr officer defect and spent six months in South America until March 1942. A German agent, Wilhelm Ter Brack, had landed in Britain in November 1940 and successfully obtained accommodation and rented an office. He was not picked up by the police, despite having ration cards with false numbers. However, suspecting he was being watched, he committed suicide on 1st April 1941. This led to a suspicion of a parallel German network to the Owens agents. Owens was arrested and found himself in prison. Dickens was sent back to Portugal, where the Germans concluded he has not been turned as a double agent. With neither the Germans nor the British believing Owens was on their side, his career was over. The Germans had paid him at least £13,850, with over £1 million in today's terms. All of this was used to fund the double cross system. Owens handed it over when he returned. With neither the Germans nor the British believing Owens was on their side, his career was over. The Germans had paid him at least £13,850, with over £1 million in today's terms. While in prison, Owens continued to work for the British by befriending German inmates and feeding what he learned to MI5. MI5 used Owens radio to inform the Germans that he was seriously ill. They had actually put Owens in Dartmoor prison until the end of the war. In Dartmoor, Owens stayed in the hospital wing, which was termed Camp 001 for internees. Owens kept feeding information to MI5 from inside, including very early information on V2 rockets. Owens' son from his marriage, and possibly acting on his father's instructions, tried to get his father out of prison. When he bragged about sketching airfields in 1939 and sending the information to Hamburg, he was arrested and imprisoned. Owens' girlfriend, Lily Bade, married a local man and settled down with Owens' child. On his release in May 1945, Owens signed the Official Secret Act and was given £500 by MI5. Owens, now with the surname White, moved in 1948 to Ireland with a new partner and a new baby and settled in Harristown, County Dublin, where he died in 1957.